Welcome to Cosplayland, I am Alice and today we are going to be doing something super interesting, super awesome and it is a hat. Okay, maybe it's not as exciting as I thought it would be. As you know, I've been doing Black Lobelia for a while I've done the skirt, I've done the corset, I've done the jacket and the only part that is missing is the hat because she wears this kind of like military style picked cap, officer's hat, I don't really know the name, whatever it is, she wears it and I was in a quest to find the right pattern for this project and of course, as usual, I did not find it so I had to make it myself as I do all the time. I do all my patterns and this was not going to be an exception and I decided to go on the quest of doing the perfect pattern for this officer's hat and you must be wondering, well, it's, it's just a hat, it can't be so difficult, right? Right? the pattern did not go according to plan and I had to try many things, I read many books, it took me weeks and weeks of research to find some ideas of how to do this because the usual methods did not work and after many 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 tries, even me trying to find another pattern from someone else that had already done it so I could just see what they had done or, or just like point you in the right direction to find it and do that one, I could not find a single thing that was useful for the pattern that I needed for my hat. Because I wanted mine to be done with fabric, like a real hat, and I couldn't find anything anywhere, no information on how to make it, no patterns to download, and, and nothing, nothing at all. So the only thing that I found were books that gave me the wrong measurements, which was really annoying, and some scattered random diagrams that whenever I tried did not work because the, measure were, the measurements were still not correct. So you can tell this has been a very, very frustrating just pattern and just this project to do. And, and it's just something like so small and, and, and yeah, even if it's so small, it, it shows you that things don't always go according to plan. And um, after not finding any patterns, or rather finding the one pattern in Japanese, which did not help, I decided to make my own, as I always do. And um, if you want to just spare yourself hours of suffering trying to make this pattern right, I will be giving you the link in the description where you can just download the patterns instead. So, you're welcome, yeah. Now, the thing is I already have the pattern and I have kind of tested it, like, with paper. Hello. And I'm going to be showing you how I make it from scratch. And the first thing that we need to talk about is the materials, because the one I'm going to be making is going to be with faux leather, which is what I use for my jacket for Black Lobelia. You don't have to use this material, but I thought it would be like more accurate to what she wears. Whatever you use, you want it to be some kind of fabric which is slightly stiff, and even if it is slightly stiff, you want to reinforce as a reinforce it as well. So we need to be talking about materials and also about interfacing and how we are going to make those materials become more stiff. The main material I'm going to be using is faux leather, like this. This is the one that I use for my black lobelia. As you see it's a, quite a stiff material, it's non-stretch and it's, it's the one that you can find very easily in, in the shops, like I think it's more for upholstery than anything else, but it is thick but not very thick. I'm not using real leather because that's very very difficult to sew with your machine, so I avoid real leather as much as I can because it's it's just not worth the time trying to figure it out unless you really want to do it with faux leather. But 
In this case, I'm going to be using this material for most of it because it is quite stiff. It keeps its shape relatively easily and I think that's going to be uh, the best thing to do. I have not tried this yet, so you, if I fail, you are going to be the first one to know. So let's let's hope. So that's going to be my main material. However, I think this is going to be slightly too thick for the visor of the hat. So instead, I'm going to be using also leather, or rather faux leather. But I just have a different one, which is much thinner, you can see this is very very thin it's just because you need two layers of it to do the visor like the top and the bottom are visible so I can't really line it easily and I have decided to go for this leather which is slightly stretchy uh, I don't know how this is gonna go I may regret it and I'm just, just change it we will see later but I thought that if I were to use something slightly stretchy like this, or at least thinner, it wouldn't be so bulky and it would be easier to just do the fold on the inside, more than the fold, like when you turn it inside out, uh, you want to have like brim, the brim just being much cleaner. So I thought this material would be easier to turn without having like very reached edges or like I, I really don't think the other one will work, so I'm trying to find a different material. This one may work, if this one doesn't work I have another one which is even thinner and other options include even lining because that's, that's gonna be thinner so when you turn it the edge is not gonna be super uneven because that fabric will be on the inside. You will see when I make it. And this is the one I'm going to use for the visor if it works because I'm not sure if this will work yet I'm going to try and use just interfacing for the pattern and otherwise you can be doing that visor with some kind of like plastic sheet or maybe even cardboard but I don't want to use cardboard because that's not very durable and if you put it anywhere it's going to be crinkled very easily so I'm going to avoid that and instead what I'm going to be doing is interface everything and this is where we have to talk about interfacing interfacing is this thing that you just attach to fabric you can do it with heat which is going to be ideal for this situation or you can just hand sew it that wouldn't really work for us so it has to be like the kind of interfacing that has like little shiny dots of glue on one of the sides and it will stick with heat to your fabric. And I'm going to be using two types of interfacing for this project or at least that's, that's what I think. If I change it I'll let you know. And of course all this information is going to be as much as I can in the instructions of the pattern when I upload it so I will give you information on how much of each fabric and what kind of fabric you need to use for it. So, the first type of interfacing I'm going to be using, as I said, is this one. One of the sides has is kind of like has like li these little dots of glue, so when you apply heat to it, it will adhere to my fabric. And as you can see, it is quite stiff, but not super stiff. It's still like malleable, you can still move with it and I think this one will work well for the top of the hat like the this is called the tip of the hat I think the top part is called the tip and then the the band in the middle it's gonna be this kind of material however it's not very stiff and that's not gonna be enough for the brim the brim you want it to be like really really stiff so I'm going to be using these are the type of interfacing. Uh, I believe this one is called Bokron, which is used for hats and you can find as well. And it's much thicker and stiff. It's almost like thick paper. And I'm hoping this will keep the shape enough to keep my brim up so it doesn't fall. And also the, the thing that goes around it, like the the layer that goes stiff, that goes off, that goes off, 
the layer that goes up as well so there's these parts over here that will need to be stronger as well otherwise the hat will collapse and we don't want to do that so I think that's gonna work fingers crossed if it doesn't I'll just go and find a cereal box even if I don't eat cereal which is gonna be interesting hmm. so that's the plan for today when that's done I'll just obviously be decorating the swirl but let's let's just start and just see if this pattern finally works because I have tried it with paper but I haven't done a mock-up with fabric yet so I'm, I'm just hoping it will look better with fabric so let's try here's the tutorial let's start by cutting the pieces before you go ahead, make sure you add seam allowances to the pieces if you are using my pattern. I am freehanding the seam allowance, but you want to be as precise as possible when you do yours. Next, I will be cutting my pieces with a rotary cutter. This is my preferred method, but you can use scissors as well. I forgot to mention it before but I am also going to be lining my hat for a nicer finish. You can skip these pieces if you are in a pinch, but it will look much better with them. Also, I decided to cut the lining of my visor slightly smaller to make sure the edge ends up on the inside of the hat. This step is not necessary, but adds a more professional look. Finally, the lining is cut to the exact measurement of the pattern to reduce bulk. And here you have all the pieces ready to be assembled. The cut is optional. You will end up with at least three layers for each piece. For the side band, you have the lining, the interfacing and the leather fabric. For the visor, I will be using the stretch leather and the buckram. I will add an extra piece of buckram later on. The lower band uses the thicker leather and the thicker buckram. This is the cat. She is optional. And this one is mine. And here is the tip with the leather, the interfacing, and the lining. You can add cross grain ribbon if you want to sew a sweatband, but I actually skipped this part. And finally, you can add some decorations like buttons and cord that will make your hat more interesting. Before I assembled the pieces, it was time to add interfacing to most of the layers. I am sewing the back of my band first, so I can make a circle. I will be ironing all my pieces as well. I give you better instructions on how to iron leather on my leather jacket video. Then, I am going to match the notches on my hat and sew around it. I am using pinking shears to reduce bulk on my seams and to help my curved edges to turn. I got this trick from Sarah Spaceman and if you don't follow her you should watch her channel too. Of course, you can do little cuts with your scissors as well if you don't have pinking shears. Let's see how it looks when I turn it. This is not too bad, but a bit of ironing on the edges should help. Much better.
I am attaching the lower band next. Again, make sure to match the front and the back first and align the rest before you sew it. And here is the brim. This was a bit tricky as I had to match the smaller lining to the other layer and you may need some extra clips to do it. I cut the excess fabrics again and turn it. And this is how it looks. I told you it was worth it! After I ironed it, I decided to add a layer of book run to the outer fabric as well. I did it after I had sewn it, so it's not perfect, but I didn't want to remake it. It is still a bit flimsy though, but for a cosplay, it is good enough. Next time, I may try a few extra layers of book run. I aligned the visor to the hat, and I sew it as well. And now, repeat everything for the lining. With the outer shell inside your lining, you can now sew both parts, leaving a gap at the back so you can turn it. It is a bit tricky with this fabric, but I managed. Finally, I closed the open seam at the back and I added a few more details like the cord and the buttons to make it look much nicer. And the hat was complete. This project was something completely new for me. This is the first time I make a hat using only interfacing and fabric. And I am actually very happy with how it turned out. Remember that if you want to download the patterns for this hat or for any other cosplays, you can follow the link in the description. Also, there is lots of extra content, photos, behind the scenes and early releases on my Patreon. My patrons get to download all my patterns and see my videos first. If you want to support me, the easiest way is to click the like button or leave me a comment. That helps me reach more people and also makes me very happy. Follow my channel if you want to see my next project and the final reveal of the cosplay. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye! This is bad.